Hi, Off-Road Guy here today. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple products I've bought and how to splice synthetic winch line. So, first off, uh, on my blazer, I use a Warren 9000 pound multi mount winch. So, first product I'm going to show you, and all these products are from Factor 55. So, first one is the Fairlane. I changed out, I originally had this Warren cast iron one which I didn't particularly like from, like from the get-go but I ran it for quite a while and not that I use my winch all that much but I switched over to uh, this nice aluminum one which is the inch and a half one it's super easy install anybody should be able to do that the hardest part is you have to un unbolt the winch from well for me I had to unbolt the winch from the multi-mount and use slightly longer bolts because this is uh, bit thicker so all these products I bought and have to do with a synthetic winch line and this winch originally came with actually both my winches originally came with steel winch line spooled up on them and that the 9,000 pound winch I got on my blazer I had my experience with the steel winch line it just wasn't that great so with my I was up four wheeling and up in the snow, four wheeling deep snow, staying on top of the blazer, and came to a tree that fell and decided I'd see if I can drive around the tree and broke through the, there must have been multiple layers of snow and broke through the crust all the way down to the axles. So I got my winch out, hooked it up to the back to winch her backwards out of the, out of the holes that I had dug in. And at the time I had steel cable Spooled it out, found a nice big tree to cook onto, and started winching and having trouble. Whereas, because the blazer was blazer's not a light vehicle, and 9,000 pounds really is about minimum you'd run a run for this size of vehicle. It's just barely adequate, at least without a snatch block. And I didn't have a snatch block at the time, so and so I started winching, winching, and it was stalling the winch a little bit, and all of a sudden I heard this tink, 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 and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I, all of a sudden the winch line let go, and we'd whacked half the forest a half dozen times, somewhere around there. And if you ever winch, you know, you can't control how it spools back up. So, you know, it spools as it does, and then you later on you try to clean up the spool and unspool it and winch it back on. But when you're winching under load, you can't, contr it's, you can't control it. So, but having that, and also I found out that's a 9,000 pound winch. The steel line I, I looked at the specs was rated about 11,000 pounds. So it's just barely rated. And this winch line I got is rated for 20,000 pounds. So, that was my experience with that. And when I bought this winch line, I bought it. They gave me 150 foot, thinking that'd fit on my winch. And when I spooled it up, I think this winch line's slightly thicker than the steel stuff. So, when I spooled it up, I found it was too long. So, I took it back and, and this isn't going to fit. And the, I bought it from a four-wheel drive shop. And he's like, well, I'll go over to here. This is where I got it from, and they'll fix it, fix you up. I went over there, and they cut off 50 foot, and he showed me how to splice some. So he spliced a loop back in this one, and made the 50 foot he cut off. He spliced the loop up, and I got a, you know an extra strap, basically of 20,000 pound winch line, to add on later on, if I need. I keep that in the back of the blazer. But uh, the items I got from Factor 55 are these uh, flat splices, which you take and undo your, undo the loop in your, in your uh, winch line, feed the winch line, feed the winch line up and around, and then re-splice your, your uh, winch line. I got a, I got two of them. Green one for the blazer. And the black one for the for the Dodge. And then also Factor 55 has what they call a fast fit. And I I 
when I was there at that place that made up the winch line, he showed me a fit and he actually gave me a little plastic one, just a hollow piece. But when I saw a Factor 55 had these, which you take and put the winch line in here, and it's like a Chinese finger trap so that you can take and weave, weave it in and out to do the, for the synthetic line, weave it together. It's, I was pretty impressed. It comes with a nice little case. And it basically it breaks down. So that you can uh, easily store it in uh, your glove box if need be. So that if you, that's the part I thought was the greatest part about synthetic is that you could technically splice it back together. If you have any problems, you can splice it back together and fix it right there on the trail in, in fairly short time. And with the, with the Factory 55 making these these fast fids, they call them, I thought it was great. So I'm going to show you how to splice winch line with these as I splice on the green one here onto the onto the Blazer's winch. And the reason why the see the winch the winch line originally had a cheap ass metal just to basically an insert into the loop and then a hook put on, but the first time I mean I took it out, unspooled it back out, and had uh, had my wife put a little bit of pressure on it. I put it around a tree and winched it in, you know, with a little bit of pressure. And the first time I winched on it, that metal just basically crushed down. It's because it basically it's only a chunk of metal that goes around inside the loop. It crushed down a bit, and I took it out. And ever since then, I just usually run D rings in that loop. And I've been seeing it wear a little bit, even though I, like I said, I don't winch that all that often. It's mostly me moving. You know, it's stuck there in the the winch line. But I noticed there's some wear in the winch line. So I first started by taking and pulling the, you take and pull the, and loosen this up by scrunching it together. And I pulled the tail out. And also I put a little tape on there so it doesn't unravel too much. And start loosening it up. And I'm going to have to take and unspool the whole thing from the winch. There, there's a little bit. I'm starting to pull. You got to just take and pull it apart by pulling the each side out. I had to take the unspool the whole thing off the winch and you gotta keep pulling each side. It's not just pulling the short side that side. It's pulling the long side through too. So well I'll show you as I go along. I pulled apart. The loops out completely and I'll take in feed it into the feed it into the splice so, get a little screwdriver and feed it on through. So, take it and open this up. And another thing about the fast fit is it has a, you see a little tape measure here. And then also, recommended lengths to bury the rope into inside by diameter, 3 8 7 16 and half inch. Since mine's 3 8 I'm going to go, it says 20 to 27 inches. So I already pulled it out 27 inches because I'm going to weave it in and out like, like the it was originally. So first I took and marked, I put a little mark here about where I want to start weaving it in and out. A little green mark here. So then you take and just kind of scrunch it together, kind of weave it in and out, and pull it through. Alright, I'm going to call this the main line because it hooks to the winch. And I'm going to call this the tail because this is the one that's getting weaved and then ultimately getting 
stuff back down the center. So I first I took the the tail, weaved it through the main line here, and then I took the tail or the main line and weaved it back through the tail. I'm going to do that once more for each side. So and now I'm going to take and weave the tail through, just kind of push it through, push the and then make sure you're not going through the center. I'd like to make sure I'm not going through the center of the one of the mains. So. And one more time, and this is the main line. It's a little more difficult because they put down one of these, uh, basically an electrical connector, crimped it on. Even though I do like the uh, this type of crimp. The winch line on my Dodge just came, they took and put it into a loop like this. And I don't, I'm thinking I'm going to try to see if I can crimp on a connector like this onto it, cut the loop off. I take it and use the fast fit which it's working out wonderful for this side because trying to get this big old electrical connector through is being a little difficult but I'm going to take it one more time I know you can't see much when I'm <laughs> trying to work it through. The there, and then I'm going to take and pull all that through the 100 feet. Alright, so I got it pulled through the 100 feet through, so that now I just have to bury the tail down the center. So what I'm going to do is take and basically measure out to the end, which it's right about there, so I'm going to go quite a bit, a little bit further. Take and put a, put just a little mark so I know I need to go past that point before I pop back out with it. So what you do is take and separate it out like this, get in a little weave and then start sending it down the center. Not being careful not to pop out. my mark damn it right down here I've got quite a ways to damn it there we go so you kind of crunch it together like a Chinese finger trap be careful not to pop the tip out And then, let's see, where's still got a bit more. It's the cinder. So there I popped out where I put my mark. So now comes the part of kind of milking it up and getting the, the tail buried into the center. So you just kind of keep milking it until you get and once you get the uh, fast fit out because the fast fit is probably the most uh, has the most resistance to getting out and this winch line is so it's kind of silky 
Undo the fast fit, pull your tail out, and then get the, uh, start milking it back down the other way. So you just keep milking it and then see how the tail, it starts disappearing inside until it disappears. So you just take and milk it. And then see how the tail disappeared inside. And now all I have to do is uh, hook it back up to the winch and spool her back on. So the last thing I have to do is take and hook up and do the uh, little Allen. Put it back. All right, guys. For closing, I wanted to show you the way that the winch line. I, I bought winch line from my Dodge. That it's on my 16.5 Warren winch. I bought is a master pull. The way they did it was a little different. The way they spliced it. As you see, they took in. Yeah, they also spliced on the much better thimble. The steel one here is a lot better than uh, the one that came on my other winch line. But as if you can see there, see how right here, the, see the little sewing? They take and actually have, they took and just spliced it straight through in. See how it's, and if you can see that in the video, how it thins out right here, because the tail is actually, they just took and spliced it around the thimble and then stuck it back in itself and are letting the, letting the, friction of uh, the, the way the synthetic line works is when it, you pull on it, it actually crunches down. But the only thing different they did was instead of just, they just did one and then they did this little sew. You see little three little stitches here, which I'm thinking I'm going to unspool the whole thing. Undo the stitching, cut the stitching off, and unspool the whole thing and do it the same way I did the last one. But it's just a different way of doing it. I don't think any way is better or worse. Because I haven't had any... This line has never been used. So I can't say that I guess that this way is any worse. But the other line I've used a couple times. And it's I haven't had a single problem with the way that it was spliced. So in closing, I guess there's, there's more than one way of doing it. But I'm going to do probably end up doing it the same way that... I did the other one when I put the flat link on. So, all right, if you take and follow me on Facebook and YouTube for further videos and comment on my videos, 